Okay, hold on. What's good with the YouTube? You already know, Big Flocko from a convict's perspective. And you already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to smash, dash, and slide on through with a whole lot of energy because I got badass Snoop up in the house, man. And check this out, man. There's been numerous people that have got at me about this story. Snoop kind of really wasn't really thinking about it, man, when it was brought up on the live the other night, man. It's an incident revolving him and former professional boxing champion, Willie Durin. Now, before we go a little bit into this spiel, I know some of you guys are going to say, well, he was a lightweight class and so forth, man. That's beside the point. If you're a professional fighter and you're champion of the world in your weight class, you got some type of skills regardless, man. This is going to be a very interesting story. I'm going to let Badass Snoop this take, take care of it from here. Recorded. Handle it, brother. How you doing, brother? You know, I'm doing absolutely phenomenal, man. I'm blessed. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to let you take over from here. And a reminder to everybody, tomorrow, 6 p.m., we're going to go live once again with Badass Snoop. We're going to try to go Sunday and Wednesdays. Um, so tomorrow, tap that in with us for that, too, as well. All right, take, take, us, take us through this story, man. I've, I've heard a little bit about it. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, absolutely. So, like I, was saying, like I was saying, man, you know, this is a story that uh, people were reminding me of. You know, I've been involved in so many different uh, conflicts. I have a tendency of forgetting, you know, them for the most part. But uh, let me take you back, man. The year was 1999. And I was out there, you know, handling business and, uh, you know, just basically running errands you know, during the night uh, out there in the streets of Sacramento. And so I'm with my cousin Juno and um, I'm waiting on some calls and whatnot. And some dude that I was going to meet up with that night told me that he was going to be at this club called uh, Harlow's in Sacramento. I believe it's on J Street. And uh, so I'm like, okay, Harlow's. I'd never been there before, but, you know, this guy, um, <clears throat> you know, I was supposed to be uh, meeting up with and whatnot. So I go to Harlow's, and I see that, you know, there's uh, people there, and so I get up in there, and uh, I'm waiting on him, you know? He's supposed to be, he's supposed to be here. And so uh, my cousin Juno was with me. <clears throat> and so we, we're over at a table, and I, you know, after a little while, I notice, you know, a big, uh, a big crowd comes in, kind of like a, an entourage, you know. So I'm thinking it's it's one of the local rappers. You know, we have several local rappers out of the Sacramento area, so I'm thinking perhaps it's one of them because, you know, this guy has their, you know, security walk in and there's, you know. Uh, ladies of the night that are walking with them and whatnot. And so they go to a VIP area. <clears throat> and so I'm not far from it. We're probably, um, I don't know, a few tables away from, from the crowd. And so they're doing it up, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking over there. You know, I can't help but notice, you know, they're, they're having a good time. You know, I see that they're, they're, they're buying bottles and taking shots and they were kind of loud and unruly, and I see some of the ladies over there dancing and some of the dudes dancing. And but like I said, you know, I mean, <clears throat> there are probably around 20, 20 people in this entourage. So, you know, I'm I'm assuming that you know it's it's uh, one of the local celebrities. You know, but I'm not I'm not uh, worried about none of that because I've got business on my mind. You know, mm -hmm. and so I'm looking around and I'm waiting. <clears throat> So some time passes by, and um, I guess Juno, he knew uh, one of the chicks that, that was over there, you know, that, that, was, that was kicking it with the, with the crowd. And so he nonchalantly, you know, gives her a, you know, a little wink of his eye and his shoulder shrug. And so the chick leaves from over there and walks to over where we're at. So, you know, we're, we're at our table, and... By this time, you know, I, I went ahead and, you know, bought a round of drinks for us. <clears throat> and um, I get a phone call, and my buddy tells me that uh, he's about to be there pretty soon. So, you know, we're sitting there waiting and whatnot, and Juno's over here talking to this chick. 
And so all of a sudden, I look, and I see this dude strolling over there, you know? And, uh, you know, he's kind of uh, got a little uh, pizzazz about himself, you know, strutting like like a young peacock, got a nice, you know, a gold necklace on, and, you know, he's kind of suited up and whatnot. <clears throat> so he walks over there and just, you know, very rudely and aggressively, like, grabs that chick. And like, basically, hey, you know, come here. But in doing so, he spills a drink. And so the drinks, you know, spill over. And so uh, I, I can't help but, but I look at Juno Juno, you know, looks at the dude and I say, hey, you know, the, and mind you, it's kind of loud in there, you know, the, the, the music's bumping. And so I, I leaned over, I told him, hey, man, you can't say, excuse me? And he looks at me and he says, what? I said, hey, you need to watch where the fuck you're doing, man. Watch where you're going. You just spilled these fucking drinks. And he literally looks me up and down and says, do you know who the fuck I am? And so I immediately, you know, stepped to him, and I'm like, but what you mean? Do I, man, I this call is being recorded. And so I immediately look, and I see, you know, you know, his boys over there. Now, now why is you? It's just me and Juno. You know, but I, I, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about this dude's attitude. Now, I'm not a bully. And I will tell you, you know, this guy's probably, a, you know, a head shorter than me. Hey, we missed the part. We missed the part with the recording. Now, you step to him, and what'd you tell him? After he said, do you know who the I fuck told, I am? I, yeah, he says, do you know who the fuck I am? And I tell him, man, I don't give a fuck who you are. Okay. Give a fuck who you are. And he tells me, man, I'm really old in. And I told him, man, I don't give a fuck. I'm Boris Vasquez. And this dude literally clenches his fists, you know, and, and steps to me like he's about to, like, like uh, cold cock me. And so I just two-pieced him. You know, I clacked him in his jaw and punched him in a snot box. And the dude just folded, man. So as soon as he does that, I immediately see, you know, the, the, the guys in his crowd immediately come you know, rushing over. And so, you know, the, the, the impact, man, you know, the, the weight of, of, you know, literally, like I'd say at least 10 people are coming. So, you know, they, the, the, the weight of it just like pushes me, you know, you know, past these tables and sp- drinks are spilling over. And, you know, I'm, I'm just swinging, man. And so, as you know, I'm pressed against the wall I've got like four people, you know, on me, man. You know, he's a pretty big dude, you know. These are like, I'd say at least 300 pounds plus. This is this dude's security as well as, you know, a couple security from, from the club because everybody was catering to, to this dude, you know. Mm-hmm. You not only, he not only had his security, but he also had uh, some of the security that were at the club over there, you know, in their crowd. And so... <clears throat> You know, while they were over there, you know, people were taking pictures and whatnot, and so you know, there was uh, quite a few people. And up until this time, I still don't know who the hell this dude is. You know, nor do I care. You know, but uh, you know, I will tell you that there there are police here too. And I am on parole, so these guys, you know, have me right there and kind of like pinned up a little bit. So you know, I push away and I, you know, uh, wiggle my way out of there. You know, so I'm finally away from them and, and uh, I'm being guided towards the door. <clears throat> so I finally, I'm out and everybody's astonished. Like, oh shit, man, yeah, this fool just knocked out Willie Jordan. Oh, Willie Jordan. <clears throat> and so suddenly, you know, the, the, the chick that was uh, with the journal, you know, she's telling us, oh my God, do you, do you know who that was? Do you, do you know who that is? I told her straight up, I, I, don't, I don't give a damn who that is, you know? She was like, you, you, just, well, you just knocked out Willie Jordan. And so, I mean, literally, man, I, I, I really have no idea who this dude is at this time. <laughs> but I see the cops are coming. You know, they, 
there, there's there's literally Sacramento uh, sheriff's uh, deputies that are right there, and they're looking around. <clears throat> and so the security are still right there. You know, there's still like three security right there. And they're telling me, you know, just cool off, and you know, and, and and I'm pumped up, and I've got my adrenaline flowing, and you know, um, you know, I've got I got hit a few times by the security, and you know, I, I punched a few of them too, so. They're literally just right there standing like, like they're, 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 people are saying, yeah, yeah, he's over here, he's over here. So, you know, spontaneously, a white, um, either, it was either a, a Ford Explorer or an Expedition, you know, pulls up. Ah! And, and the chicks are like, you know, get in, get in. And so, you know, uh, Judo's like, come on, you know, come on. So they're like, there he is, there he is. So I see the fucking cops. So, you know, I'd jump into the into the car, and we smash out, you know. And so, you know, the, 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 there's there's a couple chicks in the car and shit, and everybody's all hyped up, and they're saying, "Oh my God," you know. And and uh, I don't know if this dude was like this chick was like one of the ring girls or or whatever, but she was very astonished. So she was, you know, literally like, "Oh my God," you know, you just knocked out Willie Torn, you know? Do you know who he is? <laughs> I says, nah, no, you know, who the fuck is that? So Juno was like, oh, Juno knew who he was. Juno was like, Primo, that, that dude's a fucking uh, professional fighter. And I said, okay, yeah, well, you know, so so am I. And so, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm not tripping off that. So, you know, we're, we're driving around, and you know, you know, she bends the corner and whatnot, and Juno's, you know, talking to her and this. You know, other chick, you know, in the back is, you know, kind of shit-faced drunk. And um, so I just tell him, you know, to, to locate my car. By this time, my buddy's calling me. And, uh, you know, I, I answered the phone. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, near the club. And he said, yeah, man. You know, it's, it's wild over here. You know, I, I, just, I just got here. This call is being recorded. Hey, hey man, don't tell me that that was you. I says, yeah, that, that was me right there, man. And so he says, man, you, you, you just knocked out Willie Jordan. And I'm like, yeah, yeah who, who the fuck is that? So he, you know, he's running me down and he's telling me. So anyways, I meet up with him in the parking lot, you know, um, you know, get what I'm supposed to be getting from him, get in my car and, and we take off. But it's crazy because, you know, I ended up, you know, getting home that night and, um, you know, the next morning, you know, I, I get up and uh, I see that I have, you know, a plethora of, of messages and, and voicemails and, you know, <clears throat> so everybody's calling and they're asking me, you know, is it true, you know? And, uh, yeah, it was very interesting, man, because, you know, it ended up being the talk of the town, you know? Yeah, no, no. And, uh, go ahead, go ahead. So go ahead. What were you gonna say? I was gonna say so, for people out there that don't know, man, he was a uh, I think champion of the world in two different weight classes. Yeah, he was either the W. Don't don't get. He was either the WBC or the WBO champion. I know he's the WBO. I seen that, but I think it was in two, two different weight classes too. And he won it in night. And he won it in nineteen ninety nine, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a trip because look, here's the, here's the interesting thing about it. <clears throat> you know, at that time. You know, I was in the midst of, of, of handling my own business, so you know I wasn't following, you know, a boxing and, and you know any of the the, the local uh, um, the fighters of what's going on. You know, I was pretty much, you know, immersed in the um, mixed martial arts world. You know, I, I, at that time, you know, I was training with uh, Alex Gong. He he ran the Fairtex Academy in um, uh, San Francisco. And, and Fairtex was a renowned uh, establishment that were uh, Muay Thai kickboxers. And so I was over there, you know, in the Bay Area training with him. So I wasn't following the, the boxing scene, you know. That kind of, kind of, um, kind of got played out to me, you know. Although that that was my my first love, you know, boxing. But um, yeah, everywhere I went, man, everybody was asking me, you know, hey, man. You know, I heard you knocked out Willie Joran. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until later on 
that I, that I realized, you know, who this dude was. And apparently, you know, he came from a prestigious boxing academy out of West Sacramento, where they have, um, you know, several, uh, you know, very, very uh, good boxers came out of, you know, such as, uh, you know, Diego Corrales. And um, they, they were training with a dude by the name of Freddie Roach. Yeah. That was, sure. that was his, yeah, I don't know if you know who Freddie Roach is, but I, I was doing Freddie research. Roach this call is being recorded. 100% accurate, man. 100% accurate. I was doing some research on him. Yeah, Freddie Roach is a very well-known uh, boxing trainer that comes to Sacramento. and He's just basically somebody that would be in your corner. You know, he's about his money. Yeah. You know, you give him a, a, a down payment, he'll fly out to where you're at. He'll train with you. He, he's very dedicated to the boxing world. And, you know, even if you have the right price, he'll even train you. You just want your boxing, even if you're doing mixed martial arts. But he's a gentleman that, I, that I've met on a couple of occasions. He's come out to the uh, Washington Center on a couple of occasions. He was good friends with a promoter by the name of uh, Don uh, Chargin. So uh, that's spelled uh, C-H-A-R-G-I-N. Don Chargin um, is, a, is a known a boxing promoter out of Sacramento <laughs> that also was... Um, doing the mixed martial arts scenes too. He was running uh, You Want Some with Don Conley at the time, but yeah, it was a trip, man, because <clears throat> I ended up finding out, you know, you know who this dude was. And, it, you know, it was in, it was interesting because uh, this, this dude was literally the, the world champion at the time. I guess when he came to Harlow's, you know, uh, he came there as, as a, a, like a guest promotion you know, I guess it was being, um, you know, advertised that, you know, he was going to be there. And, um, either he had just, uh, fought or he was going to fight. And, and, um, I ended up finding out later on that he ended up, um, um, having a, a championship belt. Uh, he had a, a belt, I, I don't know, maybe about a month or two after that. And it's just ironic because, you know, when he, um, his next fight, oh, and I, I want to tell you this too. At the time, he was also undefeated. So the guy had no losses. And I'm not sitting here trying to, you know, uh, blow things out of proportion or, or you, know, you know, come up with, with this exaggeration, you know, but, but this is true, right? He actually had zero losses. But, when he went to go defend his belt uh, on his next fight, I just found it uh, pretty interesting that he ended up getting knocked the fuck out again. Oh, wow. And I forgot who it was, but he lost his belt to somebody. But, um, yeah, so I ended up getting in, in a little bit of trouble uh, uh, maybe about a month or two after that. And so that's, that's a, a incident that uh, I was involved in you know, where I was uh, uh, apprehended by uh, Sacramento ends up going to the county jail. But um, even the deputies in Sacramento County Jail, you know, had heard that I had knocked Willie Joran out. Yeah. You know, so even, you know, some of them dudes, uh, uh, you know, were, were interested if that was true or not. There was a, a deputy <clears throat> that, that I knew. He was a, a kickboxer. I don't know if he's still... Um, a deputy in Sacramento, but he's actually a pretty decent dude, man, that I, that I knew, you know, prior to him uh, going into law enforcement. You know, this guy was named uh, Brett Spade. Mm. That's spelled S-P-A-D-E. But Brett, he was a kickboxer. And, um, you know, I, I met this dude through Alex Gong. You know, this, this is um, prior to him... Um, you know, getting into the academy and whatnot, but I ended up running into him because he was he was in the beginning phases of you know becoming a deputy, and he was just he was flabbergasted, man, to see me locked up, you know. Yeah. But um, even he heard about the story. I and was asking you know if it was true that I, if, if I knocked out Willie Jordan or not. And he's the one that was telling me, yeah, you know, he he he, uh, he just lost his belt. <laughs> you know, he ended up losing his belt and. And I'll be the first to tell you, you know, um, everybody else was more 
you know, fascinated with this story than I was because, um, you know, this guy was, you know, smaller than... This call is being recorded. Time, at the time, you know, I was, I was in, you know, fighting shape. So I was probably around, you know, maybe, um, you know, 190, you know, 185, perhaps, 190. Um, you know, and this, the, the dude, uh, Willie Jordan, he's probably maybe about 150, maybe 140. You know, he was a Batman weight champion, he's, to my understanding. Yeah, he's about, he's about, weight. about five foot six. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm six foot, you know. So he's, like I said, you know, still, I, I, I was still, a head bigger than him, you know. Still though, man, like, I've seen people that are in lower uh, uh, boxing, uh, you know what I mean? Classes, right? Go against dudes that are straight, huge, that have amateur experience, and they just fucking light dudes up. Oh, absolutely. Oh, don't get it, Mr. Strudfackel. You know, I'm, 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 I appreciate, you know, you uh, acknowledging that because, as you know, man, it's, it's not, it's not the, the, the size of the fighter, it's the power of the punch, you know? He should be ready. I've seen, I've seen little dudes knock motherfuckers smooth the fuck out. Man, you know? I think one of the hardest hits I ever got was by some dude that was about four or five inches shorter than me, bro. You, yeah, you know? I mean, you know, like I said, I'm six foot. I mean, there's been times where I've been face to face with dudes that are six five, six six, you know, a solid 250 pounds. You know, once I hit them on that button, you know, their 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 knees turn to noodles. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm 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 not minimizing, but I'm just showing the fact that you know I wasn't really too intrigued about it because he was a lot smaller than me. You know. Yeah. So I wasn't bragging about it. But everybody in Sacramento talked about it. Everybody knows about it. You know, there's this plethora of people that can tap in, you know, in the comments. Um, even people that weren't there that know about this incident, you know, Cause especially, you know, those uh, uh, that, that are in the, you know, the fight game. Uh, people know what transpired that night. But the thing that's great you know, about my story story. about Willie Horin. The thing about it, Snoop, that's great, man, is that the way he came in, you didn't know and you didn't care. And just how... I mean, was he was he intoxicated or was he just a little bit buzzed or was he sober? They just got there from what uh, I told yeah, me. I mean, he was doing promotional that night. I mean, he just you know, he, he, uh, I'm sure he had a couple drinks, you know. But when you're fighting like that, you kind of stay away from alcohol. Yeah, true. You know, true, true. I know that when 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 I'm in my fight mode, you know, I, I do have a, a history of um, being a practitioner of mixed martial arts. You know, I have um, done some, um, you know, fights at different establishments. But you stay away from alcohol. You know, you eat right, you make sure your weight's down, and you try your best, you know, not not to consume. So, um, you know, I think with him, it was just, you know, just pure arrogance. And I believe that he was upset <coughs> because he was over there, you know, uh, uh, you know, popping popping uh, bottles and, and, and this chick. Uh, you know, chose to come over there and, and talk to my cousin Juno, and um, you know she was you know kind of excited to see him and whatnot. So he basically just came over there just to uh, you know I guess you know be a tough guy and show his crowd that you know I, I don't know I'm, I'm just I'm just going off speculation, but yeah. I'm sure that you know he just so you know probably was like you know watch me you know because. He came over there just very disrespectful and, you know, very, very cocky. And I don't take anything from him because, you know, like I said, you know, he was a world champ. But, you know, I, I didn't I didn't give a damn about none of that. And I'll be honest, I didn't know at the time. I, I had no idea who he was. I didn't, you know, know, you know, uh, um, that he was a boxing champion. And, and nor did I care. You know, that, that, that doesn't, you know, I don't shy away from that, you know. Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to tell the viewers, man, like, I've heard a lot of stories, right? And if, say, if Snoop was telling me this and I didn't hear it from all these other people, and say if I just met him, I'd be like, oh, this dude's full of fucking shit. But nah, these, these stories have came from fucking multiple fucking, it ain't me fucking kissing Snoop's ass or nothing like that or anything like that. These are stories that other people are telling us that are bringing up in the comments and they're messaging me. Hey, ask him about this. Ask about when he went in the fucking the, the cage and the octagon and he fought this dude. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Are you for reals? They're like, ask him. And I ask him. He goes, oh, I forgot about that. And these are some well-fucking-known dudes. You know what I mean? And it's fucking... And let me tell you something I appreciate, appreciate about you, Fuckle. I'm going to put it out there, man. One thing about you 
that I notice is that anytime you hear a name, the first thing you're doing is you're Googling it. You're Googling it and, and you know, you're, you're doing your fact checking. And so, uh, you know, that, that's one of the things that, that I noticed that, that this call is being recorded. Is you, you check the validity of these stories and you do your own research and, 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 and you know, gather intel regarding some of these stories because, you know, a lot of these, these uh, events that have transpired in my life, I don't even talk about anymore. And one of the reasons why is because exactly what you said, you know? Yeah, people start... It's exactly what you I said, mean, I man. mean, I mean, I, everybody, everybody has a day. Everybody loses a fight. They, more than one, you know what I mean? But, um... Yeah, absolutely. Your track record's pretty fucking damn good, though. <laughs> oh, straight up, man. You know what I mean? But people... Hey, I, I've told people this many times, right? You could fight someone ten times right in a row, right, and whoop their ass nine times, and then that fucking tenth fight, they just get that one fucking hit when you're not expecting it, man, and you lose. You know what I'm saying? That's the reality of it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But these stories, man, like all you gotta do is just go ahead. I, I don't want to. Some of these stories I heard, I want to eventually tell in the future because they're fucking good stories, bro. You know what I'm saying? I heard I heard about someone else today, man. I haven't even got a chance to ask you, but did you know Shamrock? Yeah, I know Ken Shamrock. Someone told me that today. Yeah, I know Ken Shamrock either personally. You, either you knew him or you, you sparred with him or something like that, someone told me. Okay, well, what happened with Ken Shamrock is... Is, is that um, something we should do a future story on or should we? Or you want to say it right now? Yeah, I can say it right now because okay. it's not really that much, you know? Okay. Ken Shamrock had a, uh, a friend by the name of Jerry Bolander. Now, if you Google Jerry Bolander, I'm sure he'll come up. I believe it's spelled B-O-L-A-N-D-E-R. B-O-L-A-N-D-E-R. Yeah. But Jerry Bolander is another little dude. And he's an old school fighter that fought in the old school UFC. But uh, I, I fought one of their, their homeboys, one of their people from their dojos. Their fight <coughs> team was called the Lion's Den. Mm-hmm. And I fought a dude by the name of Tony Galindo. Tony Galindo, um, he never made it to the UFC, uh, but he's somebody that I that I fought and beat. And um, at the time, you know, once again, it, I had no idea who this dude was. You know, mm-hmm. I had no idea who he was. He was shorter than I was, but he was a pretty big he's dude. Pretty big dude, though. You know, he had his swells on, but um. He fought for a um, for a uh, mixed martial arts um, tournament called King of the Cage. King of the Cage is owned by a friend of mine named Terry Ch- uh, Trebilcock Jr. And uh, he owns another um, local uh, fight um, establishment called the Gladiator Challenge. And as you know, you know I, I uh, owned a, an escort service, so Terry Trebilcock uh, and I, you know, were business associates. I used to provide the ring girls for his events. So, you know, I've always had, you know, front row seats at, at a lot of the uh, mixed martial arts uh, tournaments that they had in some of the casinos in Sacramento, um, such as uh, the Kalinga cas- uh, Casino out there in Northern California. And the um, uh, Cash Creek, they used to hold these um, these missed mar- miss martial arts tournaments. That I used to provide the girls for, but yeah, that's how that's how uh, Ken Shamrock <clears throat> uh, was mentioned with me because um, after I beat Tony <coughs> Galindo, yeah, you know, I actually uh, used to go to a couple of events with with Ken Shamrock. Yeah, someone told me that today, man. I was kind of shocked about that, man. I, you know what I mean? I, Kind of shocking. I, I come at you sometimes with things from left field, huh? That you least expect, huh? Yeah, it's a trip, man. You bring up you bring up uh, very interesting subjects that I've long forgotten. You know, I would have never even brought up, you know, Ken Shamrock or Tony Galindo. You know, that was you. Yeah. That was you who brought that that up. You know. Yeah, it's kind of interesting the way that I mean, it came from about multiple people. It was even one of the comments too, man. I'm like, man, I gotta look into this, man. So you. So you guys have been fighting your whole life, though. Boxing, I heard. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, I grew up boxing. Like, like, this call is being recorded. Um, uh, that, are, that are from Central and, and uh, Southside Park.
Mart, you know, uh, we, we fight over there at the Washington Center over on 16th Street, you know, and um, we trained there. And they had, they had, they've had a few world champions come out of that, that, uh, that small um, uh, boxing uh, uh, team that they got there. Well, one of the guys was named, um, uh, uh, um, not, not, I forgot this dude's name. He was a middleweight champion that came out of there. Oh, Pete Ranzani. Pete Ranzani came out of the uh, Washington Center. He was an old school, uh, I believe he was a lightweight champ. He came out of there. Man, I'm trying, you know. A couple man, other dudes. You know, one time, I, man, I had a similar situation to towards your, you, right? That you, but it wasn't no heavyweight yeah. champion. The dude ended up becoming a professional boxer, except for he was fucking tinier than five foot six, and I'm six foot five. And, yeah, sure. man, I, I cracked this boy, right? Uh, the dude was from <laughs> Ravens Court out there in San Jose. I forgot how it happened, but I cracked him with a bottle, right? And he's just, yeah. I had more homeboys there and shit. I'm thinking it's going to kick off and shit. So this dude tries to fucking break it up, so I hit him, and I kind of dropped him, but it wasn't that good of a hit. So he gets up, dude, and he yeah. just starts doing this boxing shit, you know what I mean? Like like straight boxing, right? And I used to compete, right? But I tried to rush him. Somehow, man, this little fu fucking five foot four dude had me, I was on my back by like about two seconds. Not that he hit me, I was on the fucking, on my back though, bro. So just because someone's small, man, these dudes got fucking skills, man. And he ended up, he ended up being a professional fighter out of San Jose. I'm trying to think of his name. I think it's either Jaime or Javier, but he kicked it with a dude named uh, Maquillo. From uh, Saho from Ravens Court. Anyways, man. You know, uh, a, lot of, uh, you know a lot of people don't know, Flacco. San Jose has some awesome uh, uh, dojos out there. They have yeah. some great fighters coming out of San Jose, man. You know, I used to compete. Especially in, like, in the mixed I, martial arts circuit. I used to compete in Taekwondo in the tournaments when I was little, bro. I was in that since I was like five years old, bro. I got pictures. Yeah, and absolutely. Stuff. I used to, I used to tra it was different back then. It was more point system a little bit. And then, or they have the you know the rounds and stuff, but it was all like too much protection and stuff as a kid, man. And you know, but it was fun though. It's fun to compete. But when you, one thing I will tell you, and I, and I will admit, you know, I've been fighting all my life, man. Oh, you know, yeah. I've been fighting all my life, and you know, I've been boxing, you know, since very early age. So I've always been real good with them hands. And, and your best experience, you know, your and, best experience is when you lose, believe it or not. That's gonna be the best. You know, absolutely, you know, mm -hmm. I'll be the first to tell you. I've lost. I lost many fights. This call is being recorded. I've lost many fights, man. Um, but you know what I was gonna say was, when you start practicing, you know, uh, with with experience, mixed martial arts fighters, or you know, or, or, or kickboxers, it, it's very humbling. Yeah. Because you realize, and I, and I speak, you know, for, from from my own experience, I realized that I really didn't know how to fight. You know, regardless of you know how good, you know, you're beating people up in the hood. You know, once there's rules that are established, and you're you know on the mat or in the ring or you know in the octagon, uh, yeah, it's a very humbling experience because uh, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, most definitely. You know. The, the grappling, the, grapp the, the grappling is new too. Like you know, I I can't fucking grapple, bro. I can't wrestle. <laughs> oh, that's up. Yeah, you got it. Not a great. You know I mean? And people I, don't realize, man. There's a big difference between wrestling and grappling. You know, you know, grappling is, is a whole different. It, it, it's 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 a different spectrum. And me, and me, me being you know, me being tall, that's the first thing they want to do. They want to get inside on me. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. They want to take you to the ground. Yep. They want to bring you to their level. So they're going to go straight for your legs. Yep. You know, do a sweep. You know, take you to the ground and then go from there, you know? Yep, that, that's the disadvantage in the MAA fight sometimes if you're too tall. The reach is good, though, if you got that jab. But the thing is, you're so big that you're, you have so much different target zones. Like, <clears throat> just them kicks to the thighs fucking hurt, bro. You oh, know? absolutely. You know, to the... Yeah, yeah straight up. Anyways, I think this yeah, is no, a good... You do, I think do this a roundhouse a... to those thighs, oh, you, you know, getting kicked with those shins. Yeah, it's gonna it's going to crumble you, man. Well, I think this was a, was a pretty but good yeah. uh, topic for us. Go ahead, go ahead, finish up. My bad. Okay, no, but that was it, man. That, that, that's what transpired with that. Yeah, I think this was a really good episode. I think, uh, you know, it's it's kind of interesting when you hear about... I, I'd, I'd be fucking boasting about it if I was fucking snooping. But yeah, I got this fucking pro fighter and this and that, man. But uh, he's pretty humbled about it, man. I had to bring it up to his attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, yes, it's been so long, you know? Yeah, most definitely, man. But hey, we appreciate you guys out there. Tune in tomorrow. Converse perspective about six o'clock. I'm going live with Snoop. 
Show some support, man, for, for us over here, man. We really appreciate you guys, man, uh, tapping in. You guys have a good one.